If you don't know anything about the Earl of Lemongrab, I find that to be unacceptable! So today we're gonna fix that. Lemongrab is definitely one of the wackier, louder, more irritating characters on Adventure Time, but we still love him. Dude has actually had a pretty messed up existence with a lot of adventures and high-pitched screeching thrown in for good measure. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and here's everything you need to know about the Earl of Lemongrab. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Devin Elliott. Thanks to heroes like Devin, Nerdwire keeps the lights on another week. Want to throw some of that sweet, sweet cash our way? We'll reward you with tons of exclusives like behind the scenes looks, special videos, AMAs, and more. Now on to Lemon Grab! For most of us, Lemon Grab was our very first introduction to voice actor and Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roiland. Adventure Time was one of his first gigs in VO, and long, long before Adult Whitney was obsessed with Morty, Teen Whitney was obsessed with Lemon Grab. His voice is hands down the most obnoxious sound I've ever heard a cartoon make, and I'm obsessed with it. We're introduced to Lemon Grab in the season three episode, Too Young, where we learn the Lemon Grab was actually created by Princess Bubblegum in her lab many years ago. Unfortunately, Lemon Grab was PB's first ever experiment gone wrong. As soon as she stuck that swordfish-like nose into his face, he opened his eyes and immediately started screaming. That's how she knew she done gone messed up good. It's not known exactly how long Lemon Grab stayed in the Candy Kingdom before Princess Bubblegum stuck him in Castle Lemon Grab, but apparently he was being really creepy and violent towards the candy people. And honestly, I'm not sure if what Princess Bubblegum did was the right thing here. I mean, sure, he's shrill and paranoid and he creeps people out, but he was literally made that way. It's not really his fault. And getting banished probably didn't help. Instead of trying to work out his issues, he got stuck in a castle and forgotten about. That is, until Princess Bubblegum gets de-aged by the Lich and regresses to being a 13-year-old. As soon as Lemon Grab finds out that she's no longer 18, he storms the Candy Kingdom and demands his rightful seat on the throne. But as expected, Lems isn't the most benevolent ruler. He's overly suspicious about everyone, everything, and every interaction he has. And his solution to every problem is to just throw people in the dungeon. One million years dungeon! Eventually, PB sciences herself back into an 18-year-old and banishes Lemon Grab from the castle again. We don't see him again until season four, when Lemon Grab starts sneaking into the Candy Kingdom in the middle of the night to watch people sleep. There's no way that this isn't some kind of a sexual fetish, right? Like, he has to be jerking it to Chaco Berry when he gets home. Gross! When Peeps confronts him about being a weird lights-off peeping Tom, Lemon Grab reveals that he's lost without a purpose. Sure, he has all of Castle Lemon Grab, but he has no people to rule over. Princess Bubblegum gently reminds him that he really doesn't get along with people and that that's why she exiled him in the first place. Unfortunately, this just makes him freak out, rip off all of his clothes, and run away. So the princess tries to find some candy volunteers to move into Castle Lemon Grab to keep him company. The notoriously rough and tumble pup gang volunteer to move in, but within seconds of walking into the castle, he blows them away with his sound sword and imprisons them. Whoa, settle down, Lemon Grease! I, I am not Grease! This is unacceptable! Seems like he really does not like being called Lemon Grease, huh? Obviously, the princess catches him watching the candy people sleep again, so this time she tries a new approach. She creates a second lemon grab for him to hang out with, who's just as weird and loud and messed up as he is. That plan backfires, however, because left to their own devices, the two lemon grabs are still pretty freaky. Instead of eating the lifetime supply of candy that PB gives them to survive, they use the formula that she accidentally left on the kitchen counter when she made lemon grab too. The result? a menagerie of royally effed up sentient candy beings that live to devour everything in sight. The only one of their creations that can kind of communicate or exhibit any type of actual qualities is Lemon John, a gigantic lemon whose body is surrounded by the entire castle and whose organs fill up empty rooms inside. Lemon Grabs 1 and 2 are so utterly addicted to creating candy people that they order Lemon John to storm the candy kingdom looking for more potential science experiments. Luckily, Finn and Jake punch its heart until it develops actual feelings, and Lemon John explodes himself into thousands of tiny lemon candies to save both the lemon grabs and the candy people. When Finn and Jake offer to beat up the lemon grab's heart, PB flat out tells them that there's nothing wrong with their heart. They're just that self-serving. Clearly, Peebles was right when she called it initially. Lemon grab just doesn't get along with people, not even himself. 
in the episode Another Five Short Grables, Lemon Grab 1 and 2 argue so much playing with their doll Lemon Sweets that Lemon Grab 1 swallows his brother screaming, ONLY ONE! Turns out he doesn't completely digest his brother, but he does take a huge chunk out of his head, disabling him and causing him to need the aid of a hovercraft to get around. And while Lemon Grab 2 looks sallow and sickly, Lemon Grab 1 has become massively rotund. Lemon Grab 1 is also a lot more dominant than his brother now. It seems like Lemon Grab 2 is on his last stem. The only good thing about Finn and Bubblegum's diplomatic dinner visit to the castle is that the lemon candy people seem to be a lot higher functioning now. Before, they were kind of just starved and mindless. Now they all have personalities, royal titles, and responsibilities within the kingdom. The only outlier of the lemon peeps is Lemon Hope, whose real name is Bad Lemon No Hope, because the lemon grabs hate him so much. Because he's not as disgusting, shrieky, and self-important as the other lemons, he's detested by the whole kingdom, especially when he plays beautiful heart music. Because his genetic chemistry is all whack, music sounds to Lemon Grab what Lemon Grab sounds like to us. Luckily, when Lemon Hope escapes over the castle wall with Finn and PB, Lemon Grab too seems to have a change of heart. He finally realizes that Lemon Not Need Squeeze Lemon to Survive! I mean, his brother had just swallowed him again, so maybe that's the reason? Did Lemon Grab finally jostle his organs around in his digestive tract and give himself actual feelings? Lemon Hope, go forth, grow strong, and return for us! With his brother still trapped inside of him, Lemon Grab turns his kingdom into a totalitarian regime. He tortures citizens, enslaves them, kills them, and forces them to smash harps. It seems that he's punishing anyone and everyone who helped Lemon Hope escape. And despite his brother's escape attempts, he keeps forcing Lemon Grab 2 back down his esophagus. He makes this insane BS propaganda video clearly showing the miserable treatment of his people, while a voiceover boasts the happiness and prosperity at Castle Lemon Grab. And although Lemon Hope is gone, he's the only hope left of the Lemon Kingdom. Save us, Lemon Hope! You're our only Lemon Hope! Like I mentioned before, Lemon Grab hates music. So when Lemon Hope finally does return to liberate his family, he defends himself by shoving corks in his ears. Luckily, Lemon Grab 2 screams at Lemon Hope to play the harp, and the music is so beautiful he explodes into pieces. Princess Bubblegum stitches him back together into a Frankenstein, and Lemon Grab 3 starts his road to recovery. PB says the Lemon Grab's healthiest relationship is when he's just by himself, proven by the last few episodes of Chaos following Lemon Grab 2's inception. It takes about a season before we see Lemon Grab again, and when we do, upon first appearance, it seems like he finally has his act together. His kingdom is running like a well-oiled machine, and all of the Lemon people seem dutiful but not miserable. But as always, our sour buddy isn't content. He decides to go on an introspective quest to the Mountain of Matthew to discover the answers to three questions. What is his greatest desire? What is his greatest fear? And who are his past selves? It turns out that these three questions lead to the following potential paths. A path in which he's accepted by his mother, Princess Bubblegum, a path in which Lemon Hope usurps his throne, and a path where he relives the moment where he and Lemon Grab 2 fought over Lemon Sweets. He realizes that his past selves, Lemon Grab 1 and 2, were incredibly selfish, fighting over Lemon Sweets with no regard to hurting him. He decides to jump into that door to save Lemon Sweets, but he's too tiny. Instead, Lemon Sweets swallows him this time, and within his belly, he goes on a psychedelic trip of epic proportions. He falls to the sticky, lemony ground, and a voice tells him to lick the grease. He realizes that he is Lemon Grease, the same nickname that the pup gang gave him back in season four. When he arrives before Matthew, he chooses not to know the ecstasy of his ego death by submitting his essence to the mountain spirit. Instead, he takes the last of his bag of pieces of lemon john and throws them at Matthew, destroying him. The Lemon Johns totally try to kill him, but Finn saves him just in time. That's the last time we see Lemon Grab for two whole seasons. The next time we catch up with our guy in season 8, it turns out that he and Lumpy Space Princess met up after swiping right on each other on some dating app. Of course, Lemon Grab ruins it two seconds in by freaking out about there being food on a picnic blanket and tries to leave. Seriously dude, you don't even enjoy picnics? But our boy can't just stay Lemon Grab 3 slash Lemon Grease for long. In the Elements miniseries, Lemon Grab transforms into Lemon Pink, the sweet candy version of himself. While Finn, Jake, and Bimo were gone during the events of the previous miniseries, Islands, Princess Bubblegum has become a candy elemental and turned everyone in Ooh into pure candy. 
In candy form, Lemon Grab is happy, fun, delightful, and has plenty of pink lemonade to share. He, Fun the Human, and Candy Nectar even start a little business where they drive around a lemon buggy pulled by Lemon Grab's candy lemon candle, throwing ice cream and pink lemonade at customers. Of course, this doesn't last long because LSP eventually turns everyone back to their original state. Finally, when all hope is lost and it seems like Galb is about to destroy everyone in the series finale, Lemon Grab and Lumpy Space Princess share their first kiss. And even though the show doesn't outright say it, you can totally tell that Lemon Grab has changed by the end of the show. After being a creep, a dictator, a brother eater, and a lost lonely lemon, Lemon Grab took that journey of self-discovery and actually asked someone out on a date. Even though the date didn't go well, that showed some progress to me. He was testing the waters to see what it was like to be with someone that wasn't himself for a change. In my opinion, all that pink lemonade must have seeped into his juice a little bit too, because by the end of the Adventure Time series finale, he's smooching princesses with the best of them. I give you the parting gift of my lips. I find your proposal acceptable. Also, I love that in the epilogue montage, he has Jermaine over at Castle Lemon Grab to paint a cute little happy mural on his ceiling. He never would have liked something with pink bunnies and bluebirds on it before. He used to smash harps. I'm really proud of our guy and how far he's come. Lemon Grab will always be sour, a little loud, and a whole lot of weird. But his character is proof that even broken people can grow and change. It might take a lot of introspection, asking yourself the hard questions, and putting the pieces of yourself back together. But if the Earl of Lemon Grab can do it, so can you. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think Lemon Grab got a little less sour over the series? Or do you think he'll just go back to being his same obnoxious, clingy, control freak self? Let me know in the comments below and like and subscribe to Nerdwire. Not doing so is unacceptable!